and uh, have, we had many opportunities as a community to talk with him, just like we are talking here, so he was sitting up there, and I was sitting way in the back, and the more he talked and the more they asked him questions, the more I thought, this is the end of it. They asked all the wrong questions and he gave all the wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, you know. Uh, all these theological questions and, and he gave these Zen answers and it was just awful. And <laughs> when, he le when he had left, uh, the whole community unanimously said, well, what he said wasn't so important. We, we didn't understand what he said. But that was really important. But the way he sits and the way he walks and the way he eats uh, is convincing. This is a monk. And two weeks later, I was down there. This just sent me. I didn't want to go. I want somebody to go. I wasn't particularly personally so eager to go. I was very happy in my monastery. Uh, no need to go to another one. Uh, but uh, the community sent me, so I went and first I got permission to stay for half a year and then for another half a year and then for two more years, so I spent training. Edo Roshi was then not a Roshi, so we had uh, uh, Nakagawa, so in Nakagawa Roshi, and uh, uh, we had other Roshis there, and then we went, were sent to the uh, Zen Center in San Francisco and to Tassajara that had just been started and so forth. So I got into it. But it was through the contemplative, through the monastic tradition that, that this dialogue started. And the monks were the ones that were really interested in. But it was also, as you rightly say, on the basis of friendship. Uh, when the trust was established, uh, Taisan, now Edo Roshi, always wanted to talk. Uh, he always wanted to ask questions about Christianity. He wanted to inform himself. And uh, I wanted to know things about Buddhism, so we talked about it. And uh, I was very careful to avoid the word God. Uh, I didn't want to offend him, so I would always say uh, ultimate reality or the ground of being and things like that. And before you knew it, he was freely talking about God, you know. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But we had established that we knew what we were talking about. And so he didn't care what the term was. He was polite to me, and I was polite to him. But it was, it was friendship. But my question is, this was the beginning. And now you were in at the beginning. How does it compare with the present state of the dialogue? Has much changed? Has it changed? How does it feel for you? Uh, well, I think it has, uh, has changed uh, significantly and it has tended to move uh, beyond uh, into religious issues where it was at first to a place that is now called interspiritual dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, just what people mean by that term may, may differ. But, but it's about the, uh, the common elements rising like cream on, from the dialogue, from the ordinary milk of interreligious dialogue to this kind of, 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 of refined or, or, or creme de la creme, <laughs> you might say, to use, a, a, I think it's a French expression. <laughs> but we uh, had, uh, we have a problem now because we agree on everything so, to such an extent that there's almost no room for further discussion. So, as I listen to a Sufi master or a, or a, a Bhakti Hindu or a Advaitic Hindu or a Vedantist or, or, or the various different uh, lineages of the B Buddhists like uh, Vipassana and uh, Zen and Vajrayana, as, as some of them have said, well, uh, well, we're all talking about the same thing. So, now, there are differences, obviously, 
But the differences, it seems to me, are, uh, are being transcended by a space that I don't know quite what to give a name to. Uh, but I'm, I'm beginning to think it could be called the contemplative dimension of life mm. rather than the contemplative dimension of Buddhism or mm. Christianity. Or, in other words, there seems to be an innate quality in every human being that is capable of this contemplative experience and its uh, transformative effect on, on human nature itself. 